Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of questions about lab equipment. Now, I do have my Introduction to Lab Equipment video, which goes through various sorts of lab equipment you can use from beginners through to a more advanced and professional level. But I'm running some additional videos on specific lab equipment, and today I'm going to talk to you about heating baths. This is an example of a heating bath here. This is the Ica HB Eco. It's a digital heating bath, and what you can see here is there is the bath there, and there's this very simple lift out plate that you can put in there, and then of course you can balance beakers in there. You can also balance stainless steel bowls, which help replicate what it would be like with a water bath heating a vat situation. Now you would have noticed I use heating elements in a lot of my videos, so you might say, well, Belinda, why would we use a heating bath or when are heating baths extra convenient? Well, there's several times where a heating bath can be an advantage over heating elements. I use heating elements in my videos because a lot of people don't have access to a heating bath, and in a lot of cases for lab size samples, it's not going to be a problem. But where a heating bath in a lab size becomes extremely effective and helpful is when you have to maintain products at a high temperature for a while, or when you need to use hot emulsification processing. So for example, when you're making conditioners or cleansing creams, which have a very high solid wax input compared to a liquid lipid input, it is very advantageous to use a heating bath even in the lab setting because it helps you better replicate the scale up procedures and the processing you'll use when you get to large vats that are water heated through jackets. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so let me show you a couple of features of this particular piece of equipment, and then I'm also gonna show you why we would use it, why it makes processing easier at a lab scale with a conditioner. So, first of all, you can see here a temperature adjustment knob. So we can set the temperature, and it will go between the current temperature and the temperature you've set it to. So you can always see what temperature it is at. Now it's nice and safe on the outside here. It's not hot at all. I can touch that and your inside, it is around 83 and a half degrees um, Celsius. So now, why would we use this? As you can see, that little plate in the bottom means that I can easily rest my bowl or beakers in there. It's not gonna float around, but it is gonna be heated evenly by the water around the bowl. Now, in a manufacturing setting, one of the problems you have when you have a high waxy input of materials compared to a lot of liquid lipids and waxes, as you would in a standard oil and water emulsion or water and oil emulsion, with a conditioner or a cream cleanser, you have quite a low liquid lipid portion. Now, what this means is that when you're manufacturing these in a large vessel, you wouldn't heat the waxy phase in a separate vat because you could end up with quite a solid plug that doesn't get heated, doesn't melt, and therefore can't be pumped into the water phase. So we need to do something called hot emulsification, which means we need to heat the water phase very hot above the melting point of the waxes we wanna use in the formula, and then we have to add the waxes and lipids to the water phase and emulsify and melt in the one step. Now in a lab, this can be problematic. First, in maintaining just the right temperature so that you don't get evaporation of your water. The evaporation, the steam you're seeing now is coming from the water bath, not from my product inside. Um, the other thing that you need to be careful of when making a lab size sample of this is if you do get a lot of that evaporation, you're then not getting a true sample. Also, you wanna make sure that the processes you're using in the lab, although you're using very different equipment, you wanna make sure that the procedure you're using can be replicated as you scale up to larger machinery. So now, I'm able to hold the water in my bowl very effectively at the temperature of the water in the bath. I don't have to worry about that. 
The standing plate at the bottom of the water bath makes it very convenient for me to be able to mix without this bowl in the middle moving around. And again, you can put beakers in here. I'm using a stainless steel bowl because it better represents the heat transfer that would happen with a jacketed vat. Now to this, I can add my waxy face. And I can be sure that I am now maintaining a constant temperature to melt and emulsify my waxy phase in one step. And there I have my emulsion easily prepared because the temperature was maintained using the heating bath. If I'd done this on a heating element, I'd have to watch it very closely because it's a fine line between the 85 degrees I need to heat this product to and evaporation at 100 degrees. And on a heating element in a lab size sample, in a small sample like this, it's very hard to control without it then bubbling and causing evaporation. Another great use of this piece of equipment, which it really isn't sold for, but it does serve the purpose because of its insulation, is when not powered on, it also works as a fantastic insulated ice bath. So now we can rapidly cool products too. So here I have my conditioner. I have emptied out the hot water in the heating bath and now I've filled it with ice. Let's say I wanna cool this rapidly. And it doesn't necessarily have to be this formula, but we'll work with this product since we've started it. So now I can get this temperature to drop really fast. I can then add my heat sensitive materials. And stir them through and my product's gonna be finished really fast. This also helps replicate what a cooling jacket would do if you have it on your processing vat. So I will get a rapid drop in temperature. The bowl again is supported very easily in this piece of equipment. Um, just a note, this is not actually what the equipment sold for. So it's not an official IKEA use of the equipment, but I find it pretty handy in my lab to cool things rapidly. So this particular piece of equipment uh, is an eco version. This one heats to 90 degrees. I could also have another model of this piece of equipment that will heat to 180 degrees if you find that you need to heat your uh, formulas a lot higher. They do hold about four liters of water, but you obviously wouldn't fill them up. There's no point. Uh, and as you saw, I only put in just enough water to cover the tray on the bottom, and that way I had a nice sturdy structure while I was heating my bowl. Well, there you go, a temperature controlled heating bath that makes maintaining high temperatures really easy, as well as hot emulsification really easy, especially in a lab setting where hot emulsification and maintaining a temperature where you have to heat a material for a prolonged period of time in the lab can otherwise be quite difficult to monitor. If you want more information on this heating bath, please contact your ICA representative direct or go to their website to find your local representative. I hope you enjoyed this video on additional lab equipment and of course we've got the free formula for this conditioner available for you as well. Please give the video a thumbs up, please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!